Aloha, welcome to Na Aina Kumuvai, Hawaii's watersheds. In this video, we are going to explore where the water that you drink and use every day comes from. We'll do this by following the journey of water from our oceans to our atmosphere to our Aina Kumuvai, the lands that gather and store our fresh water, also known as watersheds. As you watch the video, follow along on the Hawaii Watershed Diagram Worksheet and fill in the blanks for each step on the journey of our fresh water. I will be providing two names for each step, one in Olala Hawaii and one in English. You can write down both. You may want to pause the video after each step to give yourself some time to fill in both of the names and a quick description here on the side. Step one is moa'e, or trade winds or easterlies. Moa'e are winds that come from the northeast hence the English name Easterlies. These are our prevailing winds here in Hawaii, meaning they are blowing most of the time. Another common name used for these winds is trade winds. This term comes from European sailors in the 16th to 19th centuries. Wa'e are an important part of how we get our water here in Hawaii because they push moist air created by evaporation of ocean water over our high cool mountains. Let's talk more about this evaporation of ocean water though. As you can see from the description on the diagram here, heat from the sun converts ocean water to water vapor, represented by these little squiggly lines coming up off of the ocean. This is similar to using heat from a stove to boil water in a pot. The water goes from liquid to gas, also known as water vapor or steam. Imagine the stove is the sun, and the pot of water is the Pacific Ocean. That can create a lot of water vapor. The salt does get left behind in the ocean though. This is happening out over the open Pacific Ocean, and the moa'e are like a big conveyor belt that brings us evaporated fresh water to our islands. Step two is ua, or rain. As the moa'e push this moist air over our high, cool mountains, clouds form. The water vapor condenses or goes back from gas to liquid and falls to the earth as rain. Rain brings us all of our fresh water here in Hawaii. Step three is ulula'o, or native forests. Let's take a look at the raindrops on the bottom of the diagram to learn about what happens in this step. Native forests are a wondrous, multi-layered natural canopy, evolving over millions of years to soak up rainfall like a giant sponge that lets water drip easily and slowly onto the ground. Watersheds are primarily thick rainforest regions on the mountaintops of each Hawaiian island and are our island's fresh water collection basin. A simple definition of a watershed is a place that collects and stores fresh water. Step four is kahe kawai, or water flow. Once rainwater falls on our islands, where does it go? If it falls on healthy native forests, it can be channeled underground. As it soaks into the ground, it percolates or filters through soil and lava rock. That's represented by these little squiggly blue lines here under number four. This underground water is called groundwater. Sometimes groundwater flows back to the surface in what we call a spring or punavai, as shown here on the diagram. Rainwater also nourishes roots in the ground and flows into streams or rivers like the Wailuku or this little waterfall here on the diagram. This is called surface water. When we don't have healthy native forest, rainwater doesn't get channeled underground as much. Instead, it becomes surface water, which creates lots of runoff and erosion that gets sent directly into our oceans. You can learn more about what happens after the loss of native forest and this raindrop here. Step five is Mwanaliha or aquifer. 
Groundwater eventually reaches our island's natural underground reservoirs formed by lava flows. These are called Mauna or aquifers. You can think of them as underground water storage tanks. The water in underground aquifers pools in large lens-shaped bodies, as you can see here on the diagram. To clarify though, our islands don't float on top of the aquifer. This diagram can be a little misleading. But if you look close, you can see here on the edges of the aquifer, the outline of the lava rock that makes up the base of our islands. So yes, our island is made up of many layers of solid rock, but water can collect in areas where the rock is more porous or full of holes and pukas. These pockets of water are our aquifers. Another cool thing about our Moana Liha is that fresh water and salt water interact underground. You can see here on the diagram, this is sea level and this is the line that shows the part of our island that's under sea level. And below this line, there's salt water from the ocean entering into the lava rock. That's represented by this darker blue. There's also brackish water, which is where fresh water and salt water are mixing. But if you'll notice, those are all beneath sea level. Fresh water that seeps down from our forest, as shown in number four, floats on top of this salt water lens because it's less dense. All that salt and salt water makes it heavy, so it stays down below and sinks. This keeps fresh water and salt water separate underground. Luckily for us, we can extract fresh water from the head of the aquifer, which is shown on the diagram here, and that's the area of water that is above sea level, and we can access the fresh water using wells and tunnels, as shown here on the diagram. This process supplies almost all of our vital drinking water. Our county government provides this water supply as a service to us, but it does come at a cost. Just ask your parents about the water bill. Some of you may be thinking, hey, wait, I'm not on county water, I'm on catchment. I don't get my water from the aquifer. Well, if you think about it, you do still rely on the first three steps of this process. Remember, native forests actually increase rainfall by condensing passing clouds. So native forests are helping bring rain to your catchment. But also think about where your drinking water comes from. Do you go to a county fill station? That water comes from the aquifer. Or what happens when there is a drought and you need to buy water to fill your catchment tank? That water comes from the aquifer too. And think about the water you use at school or at businesses around Hilo. They all rely on the aquifer. So just because you have catchment doesn't mean you don't rely on the aquifer in some ways too. It's an amazing storage tank for our fresh water supply here in Hawaii. All right, so here we have our watershed diagram completed and filled out explaining how we get our water.